he was in a way a very typical soul of the 19th century. That is that typical man, similarly to Dvořák or Brahms or people like that, who were actually rather harsh, stubborn and uh, straightforward uh, if you look at them from outside, but inside their soul was incredibly sensitive, gentle and beautiful. And this conflict actually, which Janáček brought far to the 20th century and translated into modern language, modern uh, musical uh, language, is in a way in his music. Uh, so his music um, is concerned uh, with the most tender and beautiful and uh, loving uh, stories and at the same time he never stops himself to present them in a, in a shaking manner. So in a way he is a composer who wants to, you know, grasp all your attention in a shocking way, in a very straightforward, non-cultivated way, you know, in a sense harsh sometimes, but the, th the thing which he communicates are the most tender possible. He always shakes you, he never lets you stay comfortable and when he does that he introduces and transmits the most important emotional ideas possible. I think he often didn't know himself. He was a very compulsive composer. So the the general message and the main stream of the piece was always clear. And the power of where it goes and what's the meaning of music, no doubts. If you're sensitive enough, you can really feel it immediately. But the details, his writing, if you look at his handwriting, I wonder whether he could read it himself. And I think he was always open and he was a smart guy, he was not uh, uh, stupid of course. So when he said in the rehearsals, he carefully observed and he changed a lot. Every rehearsal he listened to what his music uh, sounds like and changed a great deal of things. Not often in writing. He often went himself to the stands of the last you know, flute player and changed the note without telling anyone. He was a very compulsive person. And I remember reading a story about Taras Bulba being played in uh, Prague, conducted by Václav Talich. And he actually struggled through one place because he couldn't understand what was written there. And he was actually eager to ask Janáček when he was there in uh, person. So he did. And Janáček basically didn't remember what the solution was. He said something, you know, last time we did it, it was done probably that way, but maybe we have forgotten. Do exactly what you think is right. You know, so he, he was too much occupied by then, I think, uh, with his artistic uh, goals. And he was always composing something new that asking him about past projects must have been difficult. And also he was a, an unpredictable and difficult person. Everyone says that. Uh, there are some people uh, in Brno whom I know and their parents knew Janáček in person. And they said, uh, well, you better avoid him if he was in a bad mood or something. He could be really harsh and unpleasant man. But at the same time, maybe one day later, uh, the most loving man. In Janáček there are so many transitions and tempo problems and balance problems and this and that. So you never stop thinking how to do it that everything uh, comes out as it should. So uh, Taras Bulba is the core 
block of music of my life, I would say, and uh, more than any other piece by Anacek, um, not by choice necessarily, it just happened like that in my life. That was the first one and I stayed in love with it. I think he was more uh, witty in his works than in life. <laughs> and I think, yeah, exactly, satire, irony, kind of uh, humor which provokes you, that was very him. Maybe uh, a gentle, embracing humor, a little bit less. Because he took himself very seriously, very seriously, I think. Uh, basically, majority of time he thought of about what he was doing himself <laughs> but uh, he yeah he had capacity of tragic and comic equally and you can see in his in his works very well that's true on the other hand such piece like from the house of the dead you know there is humor there too but what kind of humor you know humor in a prison so, he couldn't have written anything which wouldn't have had a, a deeper meaning. So he was a composer who never stayed on the surface. He always digged in to touch something deeper. And where, where humor was the right way to do it, through, he did it through humor. But he, it, it was not humor to be entertained, it was humor to point to something deeper. Uh, so again, it's a humor which shakes you. It's not a humor which just makes you happy. I think he really was a guy for his whole life who didn't have any um, domicile, you know. He lived in Brno, but Brno's situation, the culture in Brno was not that bad as many people think it was. It was not bad at all, but it was, it was indeed provincial. And he needed a motivation, he needed a stimulus. And he got it, I think, really in... Um, three stages. You know, one was this success with Yanufa in Prague, which opened the door to other places in the world. In the first place, Vienna. Uh, yes, and indeed, he got the most uh, wonderful publisher, Universal Edition, and he uh, gained all his confidence by them. He suddenly, I visualize him feeling really, you know. Finally they understood what I can do and now I can feel free even to experiment. I don't need to, you know, uh, be afraid of every bright and bold idea I have. Although he stayed in contact with Brno and all operas were premiered there. It was like a laboratory for him and they knew his style and they were rather respectful more than anywhere else. Yet, when he travelled around the world and, um, you know, visited shows in Vienna or in Berlin or uh, concerts in London and so on, then he always confessed how beautiful it was, so there must have been a difficult comparison. But he also uh, esteemed Brno. And yet, uh, another thing was this love story with Kamala Steslava. So I think in, in realm of uh, everyday life, this publisher was immensely important uh, to him and in the realm of inner uh, creative inspiration this woman femme fatale for him 